Russian depots with tanks and infantry fighting vehicles should run out in 2027, with artillery in 2026, with multiple launch rocket systems in 2025, and mortar stocks are almost empty. This is the conclusion reached by journalists from Ekonomischeskaya Pravda after analyzing OSINT data and satellite photos and using the linear interpolation method. In addition, according to Pavel Luzin, an expert on Russian military potential at the Washington-based Center for European Policy Analysis, at the current rate of depletion, Russian tanks and infantry vehicles will reach a critical point of depletion before the second half of 2026. Despite numerous statements that Russia has switched to a war footing and spends about 8% of its GDP on defense, the Kremlin can compensate for the loss of tanks, armored vehicles and artillery only by removing from storage and restoring equipment manufactured in Soviet times. However, these reserves do not seem inexhaustible. The publication says, it is also emphasized that not all equipment in Russian warehouses is suitable even for cannibalism, for dismantling, for spare parts, to make new weapons. For example, out of 3.4 thousand tanks, only 614 are in satisfactory condition. 1.7 thousand are in poor condition. 1.1 thousand are in terrible condition, analysts believe. The article notes, as for new production of weapons in the Russian Federation, according to The Economist, 175 modern T-90M tanks have been sent to the front since February the 24th, 2022, and the International Institute for Strategic Studies estimates their production in 2024 at up to 90 units. Since the number of the latter is decreasing, the production of the newly created T-90 in 2024 may amount to no more than 28 units. Pavlo Luzin, an expert on Russian military potential at the Washington-based Center for European Policy Analysis, believes that Russia can realistically produce only 30 tanks per year. In 2023, when the Ukrainians captured an allegedly new Russian T-90M tank, they discovered that its gun was manufactured in 1992. The Russians also cannibalized the barrels of the old towed artillery and mounted them on self-propelled howitzers. Analyst Richard Verica believes that by the beginning of 2024, five to six thousand such barrels have been removed. How long the Russians can continue to do this depends on the condition of the remaining 6,000 units. Michael Gerstad says that with rocket-propelled volley systems like the TOS-1A Salt Sepek barrel depletion means much shorter volleys. Luzin believes that at the current rate of elimination, stocks of Russian tanks and infantry vehicles will reach a critical point of depletion by the second half of 2026. This is evidenced by data from the analysis of satellite images of storage bases. From that time, both sides will probably reach conditional parity in this regard and will rely primarily on the achievements of the last few years, drones and other innovative systems. Russian elite military units have suffered serious losses during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Their main task was to eliminate the Ukrainian leadership, reports the national interest. According to the media, the Russian military command intended to use these units to achieve an easy victory in Ukraine. The national interest says that the war in Ukraine is the largest conflict Russia has found itself in since World War II. As such, the Kremlin has thrown everything it has into the fight, including its elite military forces. At the onset of the conflict, the Russian High Command had planned to use its military units to bag an easy victory for the Kremlin. While Russian airborne forces paratroopers were storming the Hostomel airport next to Kyiv, Spetsnaz commandos were going after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and other high-ranking Ukrainian officials. The Kremlin wanted to decapitate the Ukrainian command and control structure at the most important point of the conflict and create chaos in its adversary. Much like Moscow's plans, the attempt to take out Zelensky and the Ukrainian leadership failed. Therefore, Russia continued to use elite special forces in the war. They have been seen in battles near Mariupol, Kherson, Lyman, Kharkiv and Kyiv. 
It is also stated that all but one of the five Special Forces Brigades suffered significant losses by the end of summer. In particular, one of the separate Special Forces Brigades had only 125 personnel active out of 900 deployed. This indicates that the unit lost nearly 90% of its combat personnel. In military terms, a unit that has lost almost 90% of its combat capability is deemed no longer effective and is moved from the line. But the Russian military was not dissuaded and continued to use its elite Spetsnaz forces in the conflict. Although conventional Russian troops spearheaded the three different invasion prongs, north toward Kiev, south toward Kherson and Odessa, and west toward Kharkiv, the Kremlin deployed Spetsnaz commandos every time the conventional Russian forces faced significant resistance.